Guys, do you know all those movies that are really brutal and, like, terrible stuff happens to Charles like me, by the way? Well, let's start off with this movie, It. The TV version, not... Is there even a Blu-ray version? There is. The TV version has been released on Blu-ray. By the way, I'm Shane. This is my son. We're here with Hunger for Horror. We decided to rip, whip out another video here real quick. I went through... Uh, the video is another one of my cabinets. Just thought I'd do a quick one and go through a few more. So, anyway, my son, of course, wanted to be in on it. So, he hasn't watched any of these, but he definitely uh, has uh, things he wants to say about them and the cover art. So, and guys, like thanks I for said, watching. Guys, like I said, why, why did you just do like some sort of outro thing? We're only like three seconds. No, I'm thinking of them for watching up front. Uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> that's not that's not an a, an a uh, I would outro. not make a video this long. Hey guys, let's end the video. No. 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 Anyway, anyway, it yes, this is based off Stephen King's novel. It is uh, you know, the T V version stars uh, John Ritter, rest in peace, uh Tim Curry. Uh of course they just did this theatrically uh, about a year ago. Maybe a little more. I lose track of time. But anyway, this is uh, the first one, and uh, it's one of the better uh, horror TV movies ever made. So, anyway, there's it. Let's do and this. Else? You want to do that one now? No, I, I want to do Cold Blood. Cold, Cold Blood right here. This is actually a nice little arm stand so people can see the movie better. <laughs> we got perfectly set up. Well, and this right here, this is a director... Uh, Brian Avenet Bradley. He's done several movies. This so happens I didn't notice this until later, but several of these movies that I like that are low-budget horror movies, he did these, and they're all good. Cold Blood is good. It's kind of hard to find now. That also has an alternate title called Freezer. And speaking of that director, there's two more movies by him. Which are boom. Can I fit two of them on here? Don't, I, I don't no. put your elbow on this because it's kind of a rare one. If you don't mind, it's kind okay. of collectible. Sorry. That's all right. Okay. So, can, can I fit that? I have no idea. Okay. Well, let's, we let's talk about the titles. This one's called Ghost of the Needle. I got this used. It was in perfect shape. Only paid a couple bucks for it. This was years ago. I hope you can still find these movies. I reached out to this director, tried to uh, tell him how much I liked his work and stuff, and Sent him a Facebook message. I never heard back, so I don't know if he saw it or not. But either way, I like his stuff, so he's got a fan. This next one is called Dark Remains, if I remember yes. that correctly. That's okay. right. And out of the three, this one is probably the scariest and best, most well made. I really enjoyed this one. Um, for some reason, these movies get kind of not the greatest reviews, but. You know, your average people that watch commercial horror movies from the big studios, they just don't get independent horror, so, you know, a lot of them, so. But anyway, I thought all those movies were really good. What you got next for us? I have Fire in the Sky. Yeah, this is an alien abduction movie, probably my favorite one. This was out of print, I think it came back, but this was highly sought after for the longest time. This is the original DVD version. I uh, can't remember if this got a Blu-ray or not. I don't think it has. Anyway, fantastic film if you haven't seen it. This is a big budget one. This is from Paramount. PG-13, but don't let that rating throw you off. It's actually pretty intense. It's a good movie. What you got next? Real quick before we get on to the next movie. I'm sorry about all the yawning. It's 10.01 right now when we're recording this. So we, it's We've pretty, had a long day. <laughs> it's, it's pretty late, so yeah. Let's just go on to Galaxy Galaxy of Terror. I thought yeah. I missed a word there, and I was quick. Roger Corman classic got Aaron Moran from uh, Happy Days, played Joni Cunningham. Rest in peace. Um, boy, it seems like we've lost a lot of these people. Uh, but anyway, this is a really, really fun movie. Uh, low budget, but Roger Corman knew how to stretch a buck better than anybody, I think. And this movie is, uh, it's just crazy. And one of the key scenes in it, uh, well, let's just say it involves a big, very large mag maggot. Uh, so, um, you have to see it. I'm not going to give any more away on that. Addressed to go, I, I didn't even give any, like, some sort of, like, information. I just went, boom. Well, I love Brian. To go. I, I, I don't care. I love Brian De Palma when he was playing Hitchcock. 
when he did these movies like Blowout and Dress to Kill and Body Double. Dress to Kill was really the first one I think that people really noticed. Um, it's got Angie Dickinson, Michael Caine. Um, it's got uh, Nancy Allen. And the uh, guy that plays, what is his name? Um, I can't remember his name. But he played Arnie, I think, was the character's name in Christine. Anyway, he shows up in a lot of stuff. But Dress to Kill, this does include the uncut version as well as the R-rated cut, theatrical cut. So uh, this is just the plain old standard DVD, but it's very well done and it looks great. It's a classic movie. Um, how scary is Curse of Chucky? Um, you know, it starts off pretty good and they try to tie it into Seed of Chucky and <laughs> Bride of Chucky. And those movies, I think, are kind of where the series for me went kind of downhill. So except for the tie-in at the end, it was pretty good up until then. And then when they tied it into those two movies. I was kind of hoping that with this movie they'd be moving away from that. I have not seen Cult of Chucky yet, which is one that came after this. I mean, I've heard good things. I don't dislike totally Seed of Chucky and Bride of Chucky. Seed of Chucky was definitely my least favorite, though, of them. I even liked a little bit of it, but I don't know. Wasn't for me. But uh, this was a pretty respectable uh, considering how far down the line in sequels we are to the original Child's Play, this one was actually fairly good. I actually kind of liked it. Why am I shaking right now? Anyways, um... You haven't had any caffeine, so I don't know. It's Miss 45. I, I don't know why it's called Miss 45. Or this is actually one of the best rated rape revenge films, Miss 45. Um, and this was a recent uh, Draft House Films release. Well, I say recent, within the last, I don't know, five, six years, I can't remember. But really love this movie. And this is the uh, artwork that I like and remember from when it originally came out. Then it's got alternate artwork, which I, I'm not going to try to flip it around, but here I'll open up the case and show you. Take the disc out. That's what the. So when you get it shipped to you, that's what the artwork is on the uh, movie. So anyway, Ms. 45, another rape revenge film. Uh, certainly something not for the kids, but something for adults. And this is a really good one. Really well done. Guys, I think this one deserves a jump scare. Cry wolf. You lie. You die. I, I'm sorry about the death metal voice. We have been making death metal, up death metal titles. Mm -hmm. By the way, our latest one. What was it called? I don't remember. I think it was called like. What? Flood of Blood? Isn't that one that you like? That's one that you made up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I call that my brutalist one. Yeah. He, he's scared of horror movies, but he likes death metal. Hmm. <laughs> anyway, I'm careful not to let him listen to any of it with really bad language in it. Anyway, this movie also has uh, John Bon Jovi, much to my wife's delight. Main reason she liked this one, of course. Um, actually, pretty good movie. I actually liked it quite a bit. I uh, got this on the cheap at uh, Big Lots once upon a time. I think it was like $3. It was worth it. Good stuff. Uh, let's go ahead and get this one out of the way. Because this is a classic Anchor Bay stuff. And for a while they were selling their movies in these six-packs to make it look like a six-pack uh, of cans. Man's Worst Friends. And they did several of these. This is the only one that I happen to have. But it's got those right there. See, it's got the metallic foil box. Really cool. Uh, Slugs, Black Cat, Parasite. And then Rats, Zoltan, and cat of nine tails so you got some lucio fulci goodness here you got some Daryl argento goodness um probably the best release i've ever seen of parasite don't know if that's made blu-ray yet slugs of course i was on the lookout for that that was one of the big reasons for getting this i already have rats i've um uh, but anyway uh anyway i've got it again um zoltan hound of hell i remember renting that when i was a kid uh, from the mom and pop video store locally uh, great collection great films if you can find it you can find it for you know twenty dollars or less it'd be a bargain it's classic anchor bay stuff you know like i said that collectors are after that so stuff. we can now fit two of them in there so we're just going to show the next two movies in a one nope. you're going to show them at once both well, yeah, covers yeah 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 fine um so what is this first one called the toolbox tool murders the toolbox murders and Er, rat. Rabid. Rabid. What is that picture of? That's a picture of a girl who is uh, not doing too well, it looks like. This is uh, Marilyn Chambers, I believe, uh, former uh, adult star, decided to be in a horror movie. This is uh, David Cronenberg, one of his early films. Um, this is a classic. A uh, lot of fun. Definitely worth checking out. If you are a fan of Cronenberg's work, you will definitely see... Um, some of his style in this movie. 
and Toolbox Murders is a classic. It's well known. Blue Underground put this out. I can't remember. I think VCI may have put it out originally, but Blue. This is the Blue Underground version, and it's, I think this is available on Blu-ray now. It's got Cameron Mitchell. It's pretty brutal, but it's it's a good film. Uh, you know, most horror movies are brutal, especially independent ones of this nature. It, what does that say under there? There's that tag there? Oh, because we got it from Movie Gallery. It was a used copy. Uh, Evil Dwells Underground. Creep. This movie is actually a lot of fun. About a woman who's trapped down on a subway. And there's a weird man guy. But he ain't exactly a man. He's very... Uh, he's He's been surviving down below the subway. Very strange film. It's actually better than I'm probably making it sound, but Creep is definitely one worth checking out. Kind of one that kind of flew under the radar that people, I think, still don't know about. But Creep is a lot of fun. I don't know why I'm picking my fingernails into the little things here, if, if you guys can't see that. For some reason, I'm just one of those kids who does weird things. Anyways, um, on to the orphanage. Yep. You gotta read the subtitles on this one, folks, but it's worth it. Fun ride. This is, uh, was this Guillermo del Toro? I don't think so. Yeah, it is Guillermo del Toro. So, yeah. So, if you're familiar with his work, uh, definitely uh, this is worth checking out. You'll enjoy it. Definitely a creepy one. But, like I said, you have to read the subtitles. It's in a foreign I, language, folks. I don't know if that would be a good one. Since this movie title is called from hell, I thought um, it would be a. I thought a good death metal title of mine would be called <laughs> "Guy from Hell," but uh, I, murderer from hell. Well, this is Bill is about Jack the Ripper. It's a Jack the Ripper movie. It's got Johnny Depp, Heather Graham, um, fun stuff. You know, I like this one a lot. So uh, check that one out. It's definitely a great one. And that's I think I got this out of the Walmart bargain bin for like three dollars. It's three seventy four. So, it, you can get it pretty it, cheaply, and it's, I think it's still around. Eganema? Enigma, yeah, that's good. That's pretty close. Lucio Fulci movie that I just added to the collection recently, didn't have, and uh, it's out of print, I believe, so I just went ahead and picked it up. Got a pretty good deal on it. Didn't have to pay an arm and a leg for it. Thank you, whoever sold it to me for a reasonable price. I, I have no idea if we can fit three movies. No, let's just do one at a time. Okay, let's bad, don't bad. Let's don't do sensory overload on them. That's got two movies on it already, Ooh. anyway. It's called The Attic and Crawl Space. Can, can you guys yeah. even see it that well? Hey, Crawl Space has Klaus Kinski. I mean, I like Crawl Space, but The Attic, to me, is the reason really to get this. It's uh, one of these MGM midnight movie double features. If you can still find this, um, this The Attic is so fantastic. I mean, it's one of the probably one of the best PG-rated thrillers, horror movies I've ever seen. The the and, you know, even though maybe it was a little taste, taste predictable, totally floored me still just the same. It was really well done. It was really effective. Um, what were you going to say? Um, I said, I think we are just so silly because we're recording this at 10, 10 p.m. I, I just think we're crazy about it. I mean, I've been yawning like, like three times. It's just so... Before we show that one... Because that one follows this one, so let's show this one. The Conjuring. I ain't going to lie, folks, even though this is fairly recent, you know, we all like to be nostalgic about our classic films we saw growing up. The Conjuring. This is uh, one of my favorite films I've ever seen, period. I think this truly is one of the best horror movies. I think James Wan is a fantastic director. He's really the one out there, as far as I'm concerned, understands horror, is, what horror should be, and how. Is, is, what, is Annabelle one of your favorite movies? Annabelle was, you know, honestly, not didn't quite live up to what people hoped it would. A lot of people said it was horrible. I don't think it was that bad. I thought it was pretty good. However, Annabelle 2, that one exceeds this one by far, and as far as I'm concerned. And But this one's still good. Um, definitely worth checking out if you're a fan of The Conjuring uh, series of movies. The Nun um, is a really good movie, too. I don't have that one yet. It, it is available, of course. Excuse me, excuse me, this is a repeat. Yeah, the one in the middle, this is a three-pack, so in order to get those other two movies, I had to rebuy Jack Frost 2, but that's okay. Jack Frost 2 is pretty good. And it's got uh, Killer Tongue, which I've been wanting to watch. I just haven't watched it yet. Ice Cream Man. This has uh, Ron Howard's brother. Uh, what's his name? Uh, can't remember. It escapes me. Clint Howard. That's his name, Clint. 
Anyway, Ice Cream Man. <laughs> you got to see it. It's it's got a Blu-ray release right now. I think from Vinegar Syndrome, and it's it's a lot of fun. There's another one called Mr. Ice Cream Man that's way out of print that I wished I could get a copy of. Um, and I would recommend that movie too. But like I said, I don't. I'm not going to be showing you that one because I couldn't get hold of it. Um. What are you going to say about those? Because um, since of these both have blood in the covers, I just thought it'd be a good idea to put them both in there. It's Annabelle, which we already showed, and the new one, K Carrie? Yeah, that's the newest. Now, the thing about this, it's not a bad remake, and I really like this actress, Chloe Grace Moretz, and I like Julianne Moore. The problem with this movie, if there is one, and the, I think this is kind of a big one for me personally, but still like the movie enough to buy it for, what, $5, I think. The problem with this movie is the dialogue. The script is almost word for word like the original Brian De Palma's carry, which I also have. So, but you know, this means the effects are just a little more modern. They look a little better, maybe. I don't think it's a better movie. I don't think it's more effective. I think the original is still better. But this is a respectable follow-up, and I like seeing uh, Chloe Grace's, uh, Chloe Grace Moretz's uh, uh, portrayal as Carrie White. So I think she did a good job. And Julianne Moore is her mom, you know, did a great job playing the nutty mom. What else you got? Sorry. That's um, okay, hon. It's called Drag Me to Hell. A lot of these yeah. have the word hell in it. Well, you know, it's a horror movie, and that's to be expected. Anyway, Drag Me to Hell, Sam Raimi's Return to Horror. Uh, did a good job on this one. And this has got the unrated version, originally theatrically uh, rated PG-13. Um, of course, I watched the unrated one. Um, fantastic. Uh, I was really impressed with it. Really liked it. I mean, it's not a classic like Evil Dead, but it's it's good. Guys, um... I think Daddy just created the stack of the six. Is that six packs? No, these are ten movies. And these these are old out of print uh, collections from Brentwood. Public domain, not the greatest transfers, but uh, it's a good way to get you know to see several a lot of movies for a low price. This first one is the Vault of Horror. This is one of the easier ones to find. One of the first ones I ever saw out there. I think I bought this at Sam's Club. Uh, and this it has, hold on, let me tell them the titles on this. Scream of the Wolf, Wolfman, Moon of the Wolf, Snow Beast, Silent Night, Bloody Night, one I actually liked from my VHS run old days. Uh, Don't Look in the Basement, one of my favorite movies. Still, I've talked about that one. Uh, here I've got it again. Uh, Jack the Ripper, that's the Klaus Kinski version, I think, that just got a remastered release on Blu-ray, I think. I really like that one. Uh, Satanic Rites of Dracula. House on Honored Hill, the original Vincent Price black and white classic, and Night of the Living Dead. So, and that's you know George A. Romero's original uh, zombie flick that kind of kickstarted uh, the whole zombie craze, really. Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, this is a, actually a quite a good collection. Uh, you probably won't find it. It probably costs more if you can find a copy of it now than it did when you could buy it for brand new back when it was available. Um, okay, I love how the camera is just going crazy because it's putting white. It stars. has facial recognition, so it puts squares around our, it's our heads. Just, I love how it's just going crazy. But that's not going to appear on the video. Well, now we want to show. Sh show this them. is called Dead Time Stories. Dead I, Time Stories. That's just right. Just stories. Just stories. A another Brentwood collection, folks. Another one out of print. Uh, this has got uh, Horror Rises from the Tomb, Zombie Flesh Eater, The Demon. The transfer on The Demon is really hard to watch. Uh, I wish that that had been a better copy, so maybe I'll rebuy that someday. Night of the Ghoul, Night of the Death Cult, Fangs of the Living Dead, Night Train to Terror, which I actually have on Blu ray now. Looks better than this version. May I please? Um... And Memorial Valley Massacre and Slave of the Cannibal God in widescreen. I think it's the only one that's in widescreen. May you what? Anyway, there um... it is. May I please say something good sure, about this? Sure, go ahead. Um, go ahead. You on. really are yawning. <laughs> yeah. We are recording this at 10.16 a p.m., guys. Don't let him fool you. He usually stays up till midnight on Saturday nights anyway. Yeah. Or so, signs 11 or 11.30. It just kind of depends on him. He can go to bed whenever he wants to. But usually if it gets around midnight, we kind of make him go to bed. It's kind of... Whatever. What? I'm talking a lot. I need to have a drink. Oh, yeah. Sorry about that. Anyway, so what do you want to say? Um, okay. Let, let me find the movie. Hang on, guys. I know it's going to be a little bit of inactivity for, for a second, but I got to find a movie that I was going to do about it. Okay. It's called Night of the Gold. I would love how it... 
I would love it it if it blah 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 blah. I forgot how to speak English, guys. Sorry. Um. It happens to all of us occasionally. I forgot. Uh, I'm stuck on forgot to speak English. Um, neither the well, ghoul. What, what was I gonna say? Um. Yeah, neither the I ghoul. I said a oh, well, I was gonna. I was. I was gonna say <laughs> that. Um. That it would be way better if the title was called Night of the Gore. That would probably be way better. Night of the Gore? Well, there might be some people out there that agree with you. This is an old, hard-to-find one. This went out of print pretty quick from all of films. One of my favorite creature features. Again, you know, I love creature features. Ticks. Love it. And it's got the girl from, uh, what was it? Uh, Miracle Beach. Um, one of the... What was her name? Delens. Amy Delens. And she, uh, Mickey Delens, I think, was with the monkeys. That's his daughter, I believe. Anyway, good, great film. Like creature features, definitely got to try to find you a copy of Ticks. Forget the Blu ray, it's even harder to find, I believe. Um, I hope, hope it becomes readily available again. Guys, someday. um, I think this one deserves a jump scare. Oh, these tags are. Oh, oh um, yeah. It's called Ghost Game. Ghost Game was actually a fun little movie. I actually kind of like this one. I think this one's kind of hard to find. Mommy's coming in right now. Yeah, you might hear the door open. My wife's coming home. She had to go to Walmart and find her new mouse pad. Yeah, her old ones. What did she say? Her this was hurting. Hi. Yeah, it's fine. It's, anyway. it's like I just interrupted that video. If you guys didn't see that in the last video, um, I walked in on Daddy. Um while he was... Yeah, nice plug to get him to watch the last video right before this one. Or yes, the last two, actually. But, if you didn't see that moment, uh, go check out the video and probably oh leave God, a subscribe and like. Model. Anyways, um, going on right back into it, Hell, hell Block, um, the, um, the word the, Hell again, right? Yep. Here, let me talk about these. What There's, is that, like three times? These now? are three really good anthologies. It, oh, that's a nice shirt. Um, Campfire Tales. From Sub Rosa, directed by Paul Talbot, Talbot, and he. Uh, this has Gunnar Hansen in it. All these have Gunnar Hansen in them, actually. Rest in peace again from Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Played Leatherface for those of y'all that are kind of new to horror. Freak Show, another good anthology film. This was from Arrow. I don't know if this is still available or not, so got to look for it. Well, you can always check eBay or Amazon, and hopefully they won't try to charge an arm and a leg for it. And uh, this one's got. Uh, Horror favorite, uh, Debbie Roshan, as well as Gunnar Hansen. Hell Block 13, this was a trauma release, um, so you know what you're getting with trauma, you know. This is actually one of the more normal things I think that trauma is released, so I actually enjoy it quite a bit. How okay. about... So anyway. Does this deserve a jump scare? I have no idea. No, no, that won't, that won't scare nobody. <laughs> okay, it's but, called... Just, just, just to that, just Descendant. De Descendant. I actually just bought this in a multi-pack uh, because I had to get Mother's Boys, which was a Jamie Lee Curtis movie that was out of print. Um, my wife's going to try to not <laughs> bump Sorry. the camera. So this has got Katherine Heigl. Um, this is an old hard-to-find York release, York Entertainment. These are a uh, company that went out of business. I actually liked a lot of their stuff that they put out. I hope you can see that. That's a York. And here's their logo down the lower corner so anyway uh, you can find this pretty easily in multi-packs um, with other movies and get it really cheaply that way but this version you're probably hard pressed to find but if you like to have your own box like a lot of collectors do well I've got one I'm a collector so guys another another anchor bay film army of darkness yeah this is the third installment of the evil dead series you know, Which? Ash, and then this, the thing about this is, Which? this is the director's cut with the original poster art they originally wanted, and they've, they've released many different versions of this, even old Anchor Bay before Anchor Bay was sold. Uh, Hold on, I'm not done talking about this, and i got okay. one, a couple more things to say. This is a limited edition, and i got number 17,471 out of 40,000. Hope you can see that. So, uber cool. So glad and to have it. And how you were talking about Evil Dead, here is... <gasps> The Evil Dead, right here. Yep, and this when when this came out on DVD, this is a little bit newer Anchor Bay release, um, but this is the Evil Dead Ultimate Edition, and it's got a widescreen, a full screen, and it's got a, all kinds of bonus features about the uh, 
uh, the women of Evil Dead. And it's got you know updated interviews. This is just jam packed with all kinds of special features. As far as I'm concerned, this really is the ultimate edition. Um, I picked up a Blu-ray at Walmart that I kind of thought about it. It was a steel book, and it was only like ten bucks. But I was like, I don't know. This is such a great edition. Do I really want? another version of it because this was so good um, so you know I am a big fan of the movie always have been it's one of my all-time favorites uh, many people consider Evil Dead to be the uh, the best of the series but personally this one will always be my favorite I love Evil Dead definitely a top 10 for me um, most of you if you're into horror you've seen it many times um, here is the comeback this movie surprised me. This is one of the redemption lines. I love the redemption films, and this is a Pete Walker film, The Comeback. And I was really surprised at just how much I loved this movie. This movie was so, so cool. Um, suspenseful, great performances, great sound effects, eerie sound effects. You, when you, when If you get this movie and play it, turn the volume up, turn the lights off, and love this. This is such a fun movie. I can really say that this is one of the biggest surprises ever where I got more than I expected out of a film. I really, really like this movie that much. So I really can't recommend this one enough. It's, you know, it's probably in my top 40, top 30. There's so many good movies, but it's it, it's up there. I really, really, really enjoyed it. I can't really get this cover, but it's called Boarding House. Yeah, this cover's pretty crazy. It's a big green hand reaching up out of a bed trying to grab this woman and drag her down, scratching her leg. And, of course, they put the little stickers on it to make it look like an old VHS box. Paragon Home Video back in the 80s put this out on VHS, and this is a... Uh, all of films release uh, also the slasher video which I think is distributed by all of or they're part of the same cut it's a subsidiary I think they have the original <laughs> cut of this movie that runs like two hours or something it's ridiculous um, and I watched it but hey you know it's cool to have it but I like the original theatrical version better um, I think that you know the, the other one runs a little long I think they did a good job editing it and they did it well uh, for uh, the theatrical release, but it's got two discs. I think this is out of print now, kind of hard to find, so uh, definitely worth uh, checking out if you see it and get a good deal on it. If you like Boarding House, this is one of the first uh, films uh, shot on video, if not the first one. It was one of the first ones. Uh, that's one of the big claims to fame for it, and they talk all about that in the bonus features. And this does have great bonus features too. So Boarding House, it's worth a look. It's a it's an '80s classic. Uh, it's but it's definitely very B grade stuff. So okay, now two more, about done. Well, since we already talked about the Ultimate Edition, I got the old Elite Entertainment Edition of Evil Dead as well. Um, this has you know great bonus features as well. This one went out of print kind of quickly, so a lot of collectors for the longest time really clamored to get this version of Evil Dead over some of the others. So uh, Elite Entertainment, uh, great company again. They did good stuff while they were around. Sorry, they're not around anymore. So, so there's another instance of a movie that I have more than one copy of. And here's our last one for this video. Yes, hope no more yawning anymore because we're recording this at 10:25. Anyways, uh, Candyman, be climbing into it looks like a woman's eye, a man eye. It it doesn't show the entire person's body, so I can't tell. I'm sorry. This is another movie that started a, a chain of uh, a series of films. Uh, there were three of them. I hope they do another one sometime if they can make them as good. A lot of people didn't like the third one or the second one. I thought the second one was a really good follow-up. I even liked the third one. Uh, I don't know why the sequels to this film gets a lot of hate, but uh, or why they get as much hate as they do. I don't know that they get a lot, but you know some of the Hellraiser ones certainly do. But this is a uh, definitely one of the scariest, most original, interesting. Uh, it's Clive Barker, you know, story. Candyman, you know. Uh, about this guy, you say his name, what is it, six times? I can't remember. <laughs> but you say Candyman, and then he appears, and you call him, and he'll come and kill you. Uh, why? I guess that's for people who want to commit suicide. <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, Candyman, definitely one of the creepiest, scariest, greatest stories. Great performance by Jennifer Madsen. Uh, and, of course, uh, Candyman himself. I'm trying to remember the actor's name. I'm sorry, it's just late, and I can't remember it. Tony Todd, that's right, Tony Todd. So, yeah, definitely, if you haven't seen this, what are you waiting on? It's been out forever.
<laughs> but anyway, that's all. Hey, uh, hey, I have something to say. Go um, ahead. You know when I said no more yawning? Well, apparently not no more yawning. During while you're producing Candyman, I yawned three times. Well, no big deal. You're human. But hey, just wanted to uh, thank you all again if you... Uh, are able to stay with us through these videos. I hope you enjoy them. I hope you are enjoying seeing uh, the movies in my collection and hopefully finding things that you want to add to your own collection. But otherwise, do subscribe, leave it a like,